Hey there, thank you for your interest in this video. Before we get into discussing the concept of compulsory licensing, let's take a step back in trying to recall the primary purpose of granting patents. As you may have recalled, patenting system can be considered as a barter system which enables exchange of benefits among multiple stakeholders. Now, who are the stakeholders? Stakeholders are the innovators and the society. The patenting system encourages the inventors to not only invent, but also share the inventions with the society with the assurance that their inventions are safe and are protected by way of a monopoly that is granted to the inventors for a period of 20 years. Now, during this uh, 20 years period, the inventors can reap benefits from their inventions and can gain monetary benefits as well. Now, at this stage, you may wonder, how can monopoly of any sort, of any shape, be considered as good or beneficial to the society? I think you have a valid, valid point and I kind of agree to it. But then think of it, with an exchange of monopoly, the society has gained access to the technological advancement, which can be considered as stepping stone or step on a ladder to climb up to the technological advancements. Thinking of the benefits, just because an invention is made available in the public domain in any shape, in any size or in any form, such as a published document, do you think the inventors have played their part uh, in ensuring that uh, the society is indeed getting benefited from their inventions? To evaluate this, we need to understand uh, the principles of working of patents in India as defined by the Section 83 of the Patents Act. Section 83 defines an outline and a framework setting out expectations from the inventors and their obligations in terms of working of patents and exercising of their rights in a manner which is conducive to the social economic benefit of the society. Now the first and the foremost requirement of section 83 is that the invention should be worked in India at a commercial scale to the fullest extent possible without undue delay. Now this is another way of saying that you cannot just enjoy your monopoly by importing the inventions to India. The key idea is to make sure the inventions are worked in India. Now, going back to the social economical welfare requirement of the act and specifically talking about the social aspect of it. The act states that the patentees should work their inventions in a manner or should exercise their inventions in a manner so, so as to not impede the protection of public health and nutrition or they should not impede any measures taken by agencies such as central government for promoting the public health. In fact, the expectation is for the inventions to act as instruments for promoting public interest, thereby leading to socio-economic development and technological development in India. Now, taking the economic part of the requirement, the patentee should not be resorting to practices which can be considered as uh, some sort of practices or abusing of patent rights which can restrain trade or uh, the transfer of technology internationally similarly the benefits of the patents or the patented protection the patented product should be available to the public at a reasonably affordable cost so this, these are the requirements in the ideal world. The patented inventions or the patented, patented inventions and the inventions should benefit the society at large. But in real world, this may not be the case all the time. There could be a scenario where somebody is of the opinion that the society is not getting benefited by the patented invention. Now what can be done? Not anyone and everyone can practice the invention because that would lead to patent infringement. Even if you had licenses, you may not have the terms and conditions conducive for working the invention in a manner to benefit the society. So what can be done? 
Do we have any options? Fortunately, yes. The Patent Act provides multiple provisions for handling such situations. In accordance with these provisions, the, the controller forces the patentee to grant a license for such applicants. Hence the term, the compulsory licensing. Now let's take section 84 uh, to start with. As per section 84, any person interested can submit an application requesting for grant of a compulsory license of an invention by proving that the society is not able to get benefited by this invention. Now at this stage you may ask, how do we prove that? So in general, it would be sufficient to prove that a reasonable requirement of the public is not met or the patented invention is not available at an affordable price or the patented invention is not worked in India. Now once such an application is uh, submitted to the controller, the controller goes over the application, follows a set of process and procedures which we will discuss in the video 2 of this, video, of this series and then either rejects the application or grants a compulsory license. Now once the compulsory license is grant, terms and conditions needs to be defined and there are parameters that needs to be taken into account while defining the terms and conditions. Again, video 3 of this series will talk about the terms and conditions. Uh, how to define the terms and conditions. Now moving on, let's assume that a CL was granted. But how do we guarantee that uh, such a CL would solve the problem? The problem of uh, reasonable requirement of the public? So there is no absolute way to control this, but the controller may take certain diligent uh, actions to ensure that the CL is granted to an applicant uh, who, can, who can ensure that the problems are solved. So to start with, the controller checks into the time that has elapsed from the grant of the patent and the measures taken by the patentee for working the inventions. Because at times, uh, there could be inventions which may require more time to work the invention. Uh, and there could be inventions which can be, uh, which can be worked without much efforts. Similarly, uh, the controller also finds it uh, prudent to check the ability of the applicant to practice the invention. Because the controller wants to know if the CL is provided to this particular applicant, would he be able to practice the invention or not? Now, once that is done, the controller also checks the capability of the applicant in terms of his ability to take a risk in putting an investment for working the invention because capital would be required to work an invention at a commercial scale. Finally, the controller also checks whether there has been some activity between the patentee and this applicant in terms of has the applicant approached the patentee before approaching the controller because you are supposed to approach the patentee for asking for uh, license on reasonable terms and conditions. If the patentee fails to provide you or you fail to negotiate uh, over a period of time, then you come to controller. So this period of time is defined as six months. So you should ideally be engaged with each other for a period of six months, negotiating the terms and conditions or chasing uh, each other for finalizing the uh, license. If you fail to do so, then only you come for compulsory licensing. So at this stage, uh, either the license is granted or uh, the application is rejected. So this was the case when anybody, in, any person interested proactively wanted to get a compulsory license granted by the controller. Now there could be cases where uh, there could be circumstances of national emergency, circumstances of extreme urgency or for non-commercial use of the patented invention. In certain situations, the central government by itself proactively may believe that the compulsory license should be issued for a patent to help these situations. So there is no person interested as such who has proactively gone ahead and asked for the compulsory license as such. But here, the central government by themselves have come out with a notification stating that a compulsory license 
would be granted for such and such invention. Now this is talked about in section 92. Now once such a notification is issued, any person interested can request the controller for granting the compulsory license to the applicant. Now because we are talking about national emergency, extreme urgency and non-commercial use of the patented invention, the controller may or may not follow the entire process. Again, the process we will discuss in video two and may grant the compulsory license to the applicant for overcoming the situation, the challenging, challenging situations that we spoke of, the national emergency or circumstances of extreme urgency or non-commercial use for semiconductor industry. Now, uh, this is about, uh, so we discussed about uh, two cases where a person proactively goes to the controller and asks for compulsory license. And second case where central government under special circumstances issues a notification saying that we are ready to issue a compulsory license, but somebody needs to put a request. And once the request is out, the compulsory license, compulsory license can be issued to the applicant. The process may or may not be followed based on the kind of conditions that we are dealing with. So, so far, so far we discussed about the provisions of uh, provisions for making sure that the patented invention is made available to the public in India. Could there be a case where uh, similar needs arise for public in a foreign country also? Can you apply for a compulsory license? in order to export patented inventions or patented products to a foreign country for meeting the requirements of the public or citizen of those countries? So the answer is yes. Section 92A specifically talks about granting compulsory license for manufacturing and exporting of product specifically pharmaceutical products to a foreign country. Now, what are pharmaceutical products? Pharmaceutical products are any products which relates to the, the sector of pharmaceuticals. This includes ingredients also which are used to manufacture the pharmaceutical product or it could be diagnostic kits also for uh, treating or for administrating the products that we are talking about. Now. Let's talk about how and what of this. Now there could be a situation of national emergency or extreme urgency or any such challenging situation in any, any other country also where they need this patented invention to handle or to overcome the situation. Now what are these countries? Now these countries are the countries which have least manufacturing capacity or insufficient manufacturing capacity or no manufacturing capacity. These countries are called least developed countries. So these countries may grant a compulsory license to a company to import such a patented invention to their country for overcoming the challenging situation or can pass an order notifying or certifying that this company is authorized to import such and such product to their country from India. Now once such an order is passed by another country which is least developed country or least developed country yes, then such an applicant can request the controller with this document with this certificate in hand for requesting of grant of compulsory license for manufacturing and exporting of the patented invention specifically pharmaceutical products to that country section 92a now how much to export for how long to export can be decided later on or can be decided between the uh, patentee and uh, the applicant who has requested for compulsory licensing now at this stage we have discussed about various provisions under which compulsory licensing can be invoked and can be issued now, let's take an example of uh, what if, remember we discussed that who guarantees that 
the issue of compulsory license would solve the problem what if the problems are not solved so do we go ahead uh, with another round of compulsory license or should we do away with the patent itself so there is a there's a provision for that as well section 85 talks about the revocation of patent remember other sections of revocation we have other videos that talks about uh, post grant opposition and revocation proceedings so section 85 provides an option for any person interested to revoke the application on the grounds that even after compulsory license as well the requirement of the public are not met basically all those conditions are yet not improved so section 85 now you may ask uh, do we wait for some period of time before going for revocation of the patent under section 85 yes the period is two years now from where two years from the date the uh, compulsory license was granted or awarded so within two years also if you are not able to meet the public requirement so you cannot keep going on various rounds of compulsory licensing or you may be able to go but then the patent is hindering the progress so people can go ahead and revoke the patent itself so there is another ground of revocation revocating the patent but this is only applicable when a compulsory license has been granted at the first place so now who can be the applicant any applicant or any person interested also any person interested sorry or the central government can uh, send the request to revoke the patent application revoke the patent sorry now uh, we talk about revoking also now as a patentee you may be wondering that a CL has been granted now what what do I do do I have any options uh, has the CL been granted for the remainder of the term of my patent can I oppose it so answer is yes uh, under section 94 you can request to terminate the compulsory license 84 was grant 94 was terminate 10 now what could be the grounds of such termination now think of it the grounds of requesting requesting for opposition requesting for grant of uh, compulsory license were to were to show that the reasonable requirement of the public are not met similarly the grounds of terminating such an application would be opposite of that so you here you need to prove that the conditions that led to the grant of compulsory license are no longer prevailing the conditions have actually improved now the patentee would submit a request or an application for opposing the compulsory license or for requesting for terminating the compulsory license who would be the opposing party here the person who actually got the compulsory license so controller would take into account the compulsory license holder and the other licensees and the patentee for giving out a decision which says that uh, that whether the conditions have improved or not and accordingly CL will be terminated or CL will be retained now in this video we covered the concept of CL under various circumstances in the next set of videos we will discuss the process followed by the controller for uh, granting the CLs, granting the CLs on related patent applications, related patents, and and uh, deciding the terms and conditions for uh, the CLs. I hope uh, this video helps you to understand the concept of uh, compulsory license. Till next time, see ya.